I bought another saxophone. Welcome to Hacka Week. So yeah, I got bit by the saxophone horn bug. I'm finding I really love playing that Bundy too, but I wanted a vintage instrument. I love vintage instruments. I don't know why, I just do. I like the old stuff better. It's got some history to it. It's been played by lots of people, and I just like that. I have a Holton trumpet that I found on eBay back in, I think, 2004. Anyway, this is a 1935 Holton alto saxophone, E flat, and um, it says 23258 on the back, which is the serial number, LP, which is low pitch, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. There's only a few things wrong with it. I picked it up on eBay. A pretty good bargain, really. And it's got the original case. The badge on the top is missing. On the top of the case, someone scrawled with, I don't know what, nail polish or just silver paint. Encina. Which is a Spanish word that means home, H-O-L-M, oak. Or live oak. There's also an Encina Preparatory School in Sacramento, California. This came from California. So maybe this was a school instrument? I don't know. But I'm going to call this Encina from now on. So now we can get the leak light on here and see just how much light comes out of all these pads. So this is what I'm going to use for a leak light. I bought this for another project a while ago on Amazon. This stuff is really cool. You can buy it in different lengths. It runs on 12 volts. Simple as that. Um, and well, it speaks for itself. It's really freaking bright. And it's just basically a flexible ribbon. You can cut it to whatever length you want. So pretty ideal for a leak light or the saxophone because it's totally flexible. I've got it connected to my power supply here so I can just run this right in here like so all the way down the full length of the instrument. How cool is that? Let's take a look. So straight away right here we've got some light leaking out of that one. Let's check this. Yep, we got leaks all over the place. Got some there. This can be all fixed though. And let's see what the clapper keys. Not so bad on that one. That one's got a leak. Big leak right there. So quite a few of them leaking light. Which means they're leaking air, which means that if I put a mouthpiece on this and tried to play it right now, it would not play worth a shit. So let me see what I can do about getting rid of some of these leaks. And a lot of this I can just do by hand. Just like that. That one looks pretty good now. So got most of the light leaks taken care of. Um, one pad in particular didn't want to seat very well. This one right here. And on closer inspection, I have discovered why. Let's see if we can get you a little closer to take a look at this sadness. Oops. That can't be good. That peg has come loose. I need to solder that one back in place and that one looks like it might be lifting a little bit too. I think I'm gonna give it a go on soldering this up. Everything will hold it right in place right there if I just wire it up as such. One thing I got going on here, I want to put heat here, but right behind this is one, two, well, there's two keys that are pretty vulnerable to getting heat. So I need to put some kind of a little piece of sheet metal behind here if I can. Something, even if it's a wet rag, maybe. Hmm. Really, all I'm after at this point is to just get this thing playable. 
and um, have some fun with it for a while and then just get into a full restoration which will be quite a journey I'm sure okay I'm gonna try to be gentle I just want to put the heat on that post nothing else not the one next to it if I can help it so I'm gonna concentrate the heat on the post never done this before not on a sax I've done lots of gas welding and soldering and this is basically like plumbing this is sweat soldering because I don't want to get it where I don't want it. That definitely sucked up some solder right there. That's all we need. Pull that down. The closest thing I got handy is 409. But I'd like to get the heat out of everything as quick as I can. This should have been done fully disassembled. I am completely cheating. Messy, messy, messy. I ended up with a couple blobs of solder there. Let's see if I can get those blobs warm enough to suck it up with some solder wick. If I can get enough heat in there, it'll just kind of duct its way right up the stuff. It's good and solid. Cleaned up pretty nice. Not too bad for an onboard soldering job. Onboard as in everything else was on board at the time. Gonna adjust this just a little bit. It's barely overlapping here and touching. Uh, this is just gonna be grab this and pull down a little. Yeah, that opens easy. Right about there, okay. This is literally the first notes on this since we got done. Here we go. No warm up, just me putting the mouthpiece on and blowing. What's going to happen? There's a leak somewhere. Gotta be. Okay. Who's going to guess what's wrong <laughs> first? <laughs> It sounds like it's got some potential to me. You just gotta see what's going on with the lower register in the right hand here. Um, let's take a look at that. I found the problem on the lower register here. You see where I'm pointing? Right there. See that light? You know what that light is? That light is at the base of the tone hole. That is really weird. It's like there's little cracks right there of uh, a gap between the soldered on tone stacks tone holes and it's um, evidently pulled loose right there wow here's another look at it you can see right there I don't know how tight I can zoom but you can definitely see that those two have cracked away from the body the solder joint is broken loose. Not so hard to solder, just hard to get at and a lot of stuff to take out of the way first. Well, back in the case she goes for tonight. We may work on it some more tomorrow, I don't know. Taking that section apart isn't so bad, so I may, uh, I may tear into it, I may not. We'll see. Well, at least they got the old Bundy, which isn't so bad now in comparison to the old Holton. But the Holton, I think, is going to sing once I get it all straightened out. Eventually, it's going to get an overhaul. Like I said, tear it all apart, clean it all up really well, check for light leaks everywhere um, on those tone holes and the stacks. And while I'm in there, solder it all up. I may go in and just do the quickie fix so I can play it some more and kind of hear the tone. But new pads, all that, all around, eventually. I've got new pads coming for the Bundy. I'd like to thank the people on um, Sax on the Web forum, saxontheweb.net, I believe it is. Um, thanks to a few of the responses from posting this Holton and asking a few questions. That place is a plethora of information on Holtons and lots of other saxes, but I really found a lot 
of info on the specific decade that mine was made, the 20s, and all the stuff that went on and into the 30s. Lots and lots of information there. So thanks to all the people there. So I guess that's a wrap for now. Um, I'm going to leave you with some of my saxophone playing, which is getting a little better. Still a little squeaky. Till next time. Thank <laughs> you.